Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's uh, presentation uh, relative to PLM and quality management systems solution for primarily focused for medical device uh, manufacturers. So today's, uh, today's agenda will be, we'll start out looking at uh, some different trends generally, and then we'll focus those trends into the medical device arena. And then we'll discuss various management process controls that uh, assist in that medical device uh, management of information. And then we'll basically wrap it up with some uh, Q&A, and then we, uh, we'll move on. All right, to start out with, you know, brands are important. Um, on this slide, you can. there are several brands that I'm sure you recognize. Many factors play into why we, as consumers, make decisions on one product over another or uh, patronize one restaurant over another. Certainly, price can play a factor. But in general, most customers gravitate towards what they feel most comfortable with. They gravitate towards brands that their families have been have always used, uh, you know, because those brands have been, you know, have proven to be reliable and up to the standards that they expect. Well, as you know, in today's world, uh, one big reason to avoid any any control of risk is the fact that news spreads quickly uh, with the social and. and and the consumer cares. Uh, through social media, customers now have a wide public platform to voice their concern. So the ability to react quickly and decisively to issues that arise is more important than ever. Now, the F, for example, the FDA um, has uh, shifted from uh, responding to from responding to preventing contamination, right? Through, uh, through a new, uh, an act uh, signed by uh, President Obama. Meanwhile, a group of international food rate retailers launched the Global Food Safety Initiative to ensure consistent standards across the world. Now, third party auditors frequently audit facilities to make sure that this Global Food Safety Initiative uh, is recognized for their standards rather than their own in addition to, in addition to customer um, uh, requests. Even the automotive industry, um, everybody's familiar with the J.D. Power uh, and Associates um, you know, rating. Well, notice that the fifth element, fifth criteria, now incorporates quality. Uh, previously, that was not there till a few years ago. Now, the automotive companies uh, have translated that pressure into uh, a passing uh, quality requirements to their suppliers, discovering and understanding that quality lowers cost. Now, going directly to medical device companies, uh, medical device companies. I uh, uh, guess the key point here is the fact that uh, medical device companies realize there are bottlenecks everywhere, but digital transformation, meaning that as much as you can, you digitize and manage that information throughout the product uh, development process, such that you have a digital thread indicating that if something comes up, you can trace it back to that problem. Um, it's not easy given the amount of homegrown software that exists in companies today, uh, the numerous spreadsheets that are on people's computers for their own evaluation analysis and product specification, and highly customized ERP systems uh, that were designed decades ago. Now, we're, you know, we're seeing these challenges uh, in primarily three main buckets. First of all, increased complexity, uh, the FDA is now focusing on quality and not just compliance to something. Uh, the more or the need for managing regulatory compliance creates an increased demand for documentation. So your document control 
becomes more complex. Outdated, outdated homegrown systems for uh, bill of material management. Uh, the list goes on. Uh, the competitive pressures are ones where news and rapid competition, it seems like every day a new medical device company uh, pops up. We've got a pace, the pace for new product innovations and introductions has to accelerate, right? Most recently, uh, you know, the, with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, the ability to quickly test and get results back forced many companies into building, modifying, whatever the case may be, uh, testing uh, machines so that they could test and have quick results. Uh, which that obviously translated into an unplanned allocation of resources to, ad to address any kind of disruption. When we talk about enterprise entanglement, uh, outsourcing medical device uh, activities means introducing risk to the quality of the products being built. So you've got some entanglement to work through, you know, is it a bad spec? Is it a bad, is it a bad product? Whatever the case may be. You've got an aging workforce that uh, widens the skill gap for workers. Uh, you've got virtual trust in the fact that people, some people have a hard time working virtually uh, you know, and collaborate uh, long distance. And then too many issues not identified until late in the process. Um, that, that goes to a uh, product development, uh, development cycle. So anyway, uh, let's move on. With these, the key point here is that software has become uh, the biggest cause for medical device recalls, indicating uh, an issue with software development and quality in the industry. All right, an agile approach ensures management of engineering requirements that change rapidly, right? So companies have to be flexible and agile and, and uh, ability to change and respond quickly. Uh, companies are rewarded for doing this right and negatively impacted when they go wrong. Now, uh, the, e, the European uh, MDR deadline are quick, you know, deadlines are quickly approaching. Over the past three years, manufacturers have been working tirelessly to recertify certain devices uh, with the new regulations as innovation continues to progress. Now, it's clear that the key quality processes through this listing here, key quality processes have to be updated to meet the European MDR standards. Uh, how are these processes linked to PLM? Well, with visibility into quality data across the R&D or research and development production and service, medical device companies are better equipped to respond to problems quicker and expedite the release of product updates. However, linking to PLM with medical device quality is not a priority for many organizations, but it should be. Now, when we talk about linking PLM and quality processes through the digital thread, it's important to recognize that these are the types of things, types of processes, types of risks that can be managed. Uh, because of the high stakes of uh, implantable devices, as well as tight regulations as a result of this uh, European MDR medical product quality uh, process, uh, our processes are extremely intrinsic in comparison to those for other products. So you can see that you know 64 percent have a have a design history file management process. Uh, the same percentage of, for a device medical record. Um, those are two key things that uh, have to be managed and reported on and available in, you know, through audits. So what's happening with the other 36% uh, here is the question. Moving on uh, relative to how uh, current internet of things or IOT use cases uh, for medical device companies uh, are happening. Uh, between siloed data sources, growing product complexity, and the pressures to maintain customer satisfaction, the path for integrating 
quality management and product lifecycle management has many roadblocks. One method of smoothing this transition to a single platform is Internet of Things, or IoT for short. With IoT, quality data can easily be transferred into the PLM platform and shared among the organization, collaborating companies, and end users. Uh, it, you know, t we've got uh, telemed that's currently available. We've got uh, remote management and remote understanding of how oxygen machines are performing. And so the, the medical device companies are able to jump ahead and get on top of something that possibly not holding to the standard that it needs to and proactively go out and reach out through the field service and support group or contact that user. Now, there are three main areas of quality management. Data management, all this information that comes in that we've been talking about. Processes, basically how things are to be done and standardizing those and making sure that uh, it is a part-centric approach. And lastly, design and document control. Uh, with PLM Foundation, look to tie these two things together so that you can maintain a strategic advantage, maintaining a digital thread, providing traceability and governance that will govern the process. Now, where to start? Uh, wind chill, PTC's wind chill product quality is one that has a wide spectrum of capabilities. Yeah, but in the center here, you can see that you've got document control, design control, and then surveillance and corrective action, which basically is your quality management. Uh, things such as non-conformance complaints and CAPAs and SCARs. But uh, notice the breadth of, uh, of controlled processes, everything umbrellaed umber underneath the change control process and managed very tightly so that you do have that digital thread and that tie back to origination. Now, when we talk about these PLM and quality systems, uh, we, we always get the statement of, you know, they're so complex, they're engineering focused, they're, you know, they've got too much, too many things to look at and too many buttons and clicks to, to execute to. Well, PTC's Navigate user interface allows for viewing, printing, authoring, and reporting, and it's you know, there, what we have found is, is that out of all the users in the enterprise, only 20% of them are high volume, high content, detailed content contributors, basically the engineering and design areas. Um, everybody else is consumers to that information that the engineers and designers and regulatory people may put onto it. And so the, for these light contributors and consumers of uh, information, uh, there is the solution that is available through PTC Windchill is a product called ThingWorks. And what this is, is a set of applications. Each one of those tiles is an application that has a specific purpose. On the left-hand side, you can see that, you know, the various uh, out-of-the-box uh, apps that are ready. It's configurable by role. So, example, for example, uh, quality doesn't necessarily have any need for maybe purchasing type information. Uh, and so you put the apps, you assemble the various apps according to the role that the individuals will be using. Uh, the benefit about all of this is the fact that you get valuable information in a very easy, deployable manner, and it's available to everybody so that uh, it, faster decision making can take place. Lastly, from a contribute perspective, is, is that if you happen to be uh, in an approval cycle, then you can uh, go to the task, uh, the application of my tasks. You can see the change request, you can access the content, and you can basically approve what, you know, ap approve this change order. So you don't have to log into the quote unquote engineering system. You can do it through this simple web, web enabled application. Just lastly, just to re reiterate the fact that uh, it, the role group can have 
access to a subset of apps. In this example, production has the ability to view design files as well as to view the drawing. Okay, so those two apps are what the production environment uses, all users in the production environment. And then purchasing has, they can view uh, part, uh, the part properties, they can view drawings, they can view documents, they can view the product structure, um, you know, to help them in making the make-buy decision, uh, as well as identifying preferred suppliers, quantity in stock, and on hand, that stuff. So anyway, so I wanted to uh, set that off as a starting point. And uh, right now, we're, we're going to go ahead and kick off a quick poll, take 30 seconds, you can uh, answer the question, and then uh, the time will then be turned over to Wendy, and she will take us through the various um, uh, processes, and then we'll uh, come back for some Q&A. So before we get into the nuts and bolts of the individual processes, we want to remember that the goal is to have a fully integrated closed loop quality management system. And I think it's helpful to see what that looks like first and then dig deeper into the various process flows. There are a variety of issues that can start the process. It could be a problem report, a deviation, a nonconformance, or a customer complaint. Once the initial issue is recorded, it can be promoted up the process chain for further action. Problem reports and deviations can move to an engineering change request for technical evaluation and business justification, and also to establish a change review board. Nonconformances and complaints can escalate to a CAPA request, where root causes are identified and action plans can be defined. Both the change request and CAPA request can then move on to a change notice. The change notice will implement any document, material, process changes to the affected items. An implementation plan is created and executed by the assigned implementation board. Effectivity is determined as well as instructions for rework, scrap, or other disposition activities, and the results are audited. Once the defined tasks are completed, the change notice is closed, which then moves the workflow all the way back through the initiating processes and closes out the related outstanding change requests, problem reports, complaints, or nonconformances. Most life sciences and med device customers come to us for help in managing their quality system to comply with ISO 1345 and all of its required processes. And this solution will definitely do that. But the beauty of an integrated system like this is that it builds relationships between all the different types of data that you're accumulating. You won't have to wade through half a dozen separate sources to review quality related issues. Instead, when you look at an item or a process, <clears throat> all of the quality issues associated with it are right there in plain sight, ready for your reporting and analysis that will help you to manage not only your quality system, but the actual quality of your product which is really the goal of any quality system. Great, and with that, let's uh, begin with document control. So PTC understands the mission critical nature of document management for medical device and life sciences customers. It's the supporting foundation for every process we're going to look at today. Within PTC doc control, companies are able to implement a standard ISO 13485 document control process. They can easily create SOPs and policies and ensure that access and distribution is limited to the correct versions of the document and the responsible personnel. Training is a critical part of document control, especially for med device. So training tasks are automatically generated when changes are made to SOPs or policies. And management has real-time access to reports, including training reports, training records, and easy-to-use dashboards. The PTC solution also comes with predefined out-of-the-box document types, configurable attributes and workflows, unique metadata collection and process workflows per document type designed to meet your requirements. 21 CFR Part 11 compliant electronic signatures for complete configurability of e-signatures at all appropriate stages of the process. 
change control, which is so essential, is fully integrated to create auditable records. And you'll have easy to use Microsoft integration with familiar desktop tools like Word and Windows Explorer. And with document control in place, it's time to move on to design control. Design control is the formal methodology framework for product development activities. For med device, regulations require you to meet ISO 9001 standards, which take a risk-based risk -based approach to design control. PTC design control framework has several key elements, a proven and consistent product realization process, the generation of accurate, complete design history files, as well as device master records, product planning to understand product status and regulatory milestones to accurately identify and manage key deliverables. And this also makes it critical for most companies to have Microsoft project integration for planning and execution at the enterprise level. PTC's bill of information structure is more than just a list of parts that make up the bomb. It's the CAD and process documents all information that represents the digital product definition. In other words, everything needed to accurately describe and define the product. And because it's fully integrated with the document control foundation, it has robust change control for auditable records. Design reviews on the digital product definition, both formal and informal, to support your company needs. FMEA and risk management integration to capture hazard codes and risk analysis for failure modes and their effects. Pre-configured files are provided to collect the design information to comply with 21 CFR Part 820 for your design history file and device master records. And parts classification for analytics, streamlining part reuse, and the easy identification of documentation and other requirements that you may have. Risk and requirements management is critical, not only to design control, but to the continuous improvement and resolution of quality issues. This management area includes being able to view risk and requirements, information as they relate to products, assemblies, and parts, the ability to capture the voice of the customer via requirements, as well as post-market surveillance, such as capturing complaints from the field. It includes both released and in-work FMEA and also fault trees. So one of the key features of PTC Navigate includes easy to use navigation tabs to review these risk and requirement elements, such as voice of the customer and FMEA. And here's an example of requirements and VOC. It can be against the top level or any line item within the BOM on the left-hand side. On the right side, we see the different requirements per line item. The requirements can be categorized. This example shows both functional requirements and compliance requirements. The small graph in the lower right highlights the different categories and the traceability for each one of the requirements. And here's an example of the PTC Navigate dashboard view for post-market complaints. We see that it includes the state of each complaint, who entered it, from where and how it was initially reported, as well as the failure modes and the circumstances of use. This interactive report also has drill down capabilities to view full details for each complaint. Great. With that, we're going to move on to some of the core elements of the quality solution. A lot of times this will begin with a complaint. Documenting and resolving complaints is a key element for any quality system, but it's critical for medical device. A standard closed loop customer experience management process is a vital part of the overall quality solution. A successful complaint management solution should support intake, reporting, and capture of external quality information such as customer feedback, field product experiences, and customer complaints. It should have a pre-configured ISO 13485 customer feedback process, and it has to include steps for regulatory reporting. And you'll want full integration to the CAPA and SCAR processes in order to properly investigate, resolve, and close out the complaint. In addition to all of these key features, PTC solution comes with fully integrated with the Bill of Information and the FMEA codes, and you can classify failures against any level of the bomb. 
And of course, it's not only pre-configured, but it's also configurable. It's fast and easy to not only document the complaint, but to escalate it up into the CAPA process. Non-conformance reporting is another possible input for internal corrective actions or supplier corrective actions. Med device companies want a best practice closed loop non-conformance process that will take you through all of the critical steps from identification, evaluation, through to disposition of non-conforming product. The evaluation of non-conformance must include a determination of the need for an investigation and notification of the persons or the organizations responsible for the non-conformance. With PTC, you'll have clear visibility across many potential sources of quality issues. Complete coordination with PLM and product changes. You'll have enterprise class reporting and visibility into quality trends and the ability to escalate to CAFA or supplier corrective action is needed. PTC's non-conformance solution supports e-signatures. It has rapid entry screens and data entry accelerators, which make it easy to use. It has configurable screens, workflows, labels, and dropdowns to support deployment of a system to meet your specific business requirements. It provides sub-workflows and capabilities to support a variety of related and often complex processes, such as your MRB, detailed or split lot disposition. And because it's part of a fully integrated system, you can start an NC for any item on the bomb and capture immediate corrections or escalate to a Kappa or SCAR. So your complaint or non-conformance process would then feed into the Kappa or supplier corrective action the PTC solution supports both internal and external corrective and preventive actions. Corrective actions are typically reactive measures like reacting to a complaint. For a lot of companies, this is the main focus of their quality system. But the visibility you gain in this fully integrated system will allow you to take the leap into proactive measures. Imagine unleashing the power of your employees to visualize potential problems based on easy to analyze data and then take preventive action. The PTC Kappa solution provides capabilities and benefits that will help to speed up the resolution of quality issues across the entire product lifecycle. It allows employees to quickly capture the incoming Kappas. It's fully integrated with both the bill of the information and the entire change process, as well as the other quality processes that feed into it. So this creates auditable records from start to finish and provides a single source of information that will reduce scrap and rework. It comes pre-configured to include predefined but configurable workflows and those critical in integrations that we've been discussing. It has automatic generation of change notices, it captures the root cause analysis, and it allows for multiple independent action threads when you have complex kappas, especially those with multiple root causes. And it includes effectiveness monitoring and integrated reporting to take your quality system to the next level. And last, let's take a look at audit management. PTC provides a best practice solution to support audit management. This includes projects for the management of single or recurring audits. A single project can contain multiple project plans. Through the desktop interface, there are smart form templates, which can be used as your master audit checklist. There's auto execution of the audit process workflow, and your audit observations and findings can use subtype nonconformances for categorization and process purposes. They can easily be escalated to a CAPA when necessary. And as we've already discussed, your CAPA can then drive the change control process to resolve the issues revealed by your audit. The standard audit process consists of a six step process with subtasks for each step starting with the request for the audit. And then step two would be to create the audit plan and obtain approval. Next, you would conduct the actual audit. Then there's your reporting and the managing of the responses, confirming completion and effect effectiveness and a final review. And then finally, to complete the audit. 
As you can see on the right hand side, each subtask is supported by a variety of records and processes for that particular line item. For example, to conduct your audit, you would first need your audit checklist, as well as your standard operating procedures or work instructions. So before I turn the mic back over to Jeff, I want to return to our original goal, a closed loop quality management system. We started today with the foundational processes like document and design control, as well as risk management. And then we looked at the individual quality processes like problem reports, nonconformances, and complaints, and saw how they can escalate into a change request, CAPA, or SCAR. And then they can be promoted into a robust change control process with implementation activities and a truly closed loop framework that will significantly increase the power of your quality system and allow you to manage the quality of your product with far more visibility than you could ever have in separate independent processes. And with that, I think we have one more poll and then I'll hand this back over to Jeff for some closing comments and Q&A. All right, so the benefits of this uh, type of a solution is the fact that it is largely, oh, it's out of, the, out of the box functionality. It provides best practices for medical device industries and easy to adopt as, you, as, I, as we indicated earlier, there's two different user interfaces. One that is the detail for uh, engineering design and other detailed oriented type activities. And then there's the consumer. It reduces the implementation effort because this is a pre-configured, pre so to speak, uh, but yet configurable solution. It's up, upgrade compatible. And the big hitter here for all medical device uh, industry uh, companies are the fact that it's got pre-configured validation packages. Uh, so you don't have to think up your, you know, your, the, the standard template of you know, use case and, um, you know, did I put, in, what I put in, did I get my results back out? So again, the benefits are that number one, you'll be, you maintain compliancy and you've got a fully integrated solution within PLM and quality management system. So with that, I guess if there are any questions, Let's go ahead and take them. We actually had two come in and I can take one of them if you don't mind, Jeff. Sure. Um, is the QMS a cloud or on-premise solution? Um, to that, the answer is both. Uh, what we are actually, what we talked about earlier, the uh, free 30 days of, of uh, access to the QMS solution will be to a cloud solution sandbox. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, if not, please follow it up with, with further uh, detail. But the other one, Jeff, I'll give this to you or, or Wendy. Can you perform a mass update? Um, there is import capability for uh, updating. Uh, you know, mass update in what context is, uh, is an important factor to consider uh, because on uh, released items, uh, depending upon what you're mass updating could require a change control. And so it would have to be mass update through a change process or if not, if it's an ancillary attribute, then a standard um, you know, import type of update could uh, take place for records that you've identified. So I I'm gonna answer it as it depends. Uh, there's not enough information there for me to put it into context as a binary answer. Wanted to thank everyone once again for our time. I, I do know that we uh, went over a little bit. I hope that you'll forgive us. Um, any questions that you can think of later on, uh, if you choose not to ask them here, you may contact us directly, either via our website or the contact information you see here on the slide. Um, thank you, Wendy and Jeff. You both did a magnificent job, and it's been a pleasure having you both. Uh, we hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.